fragments. This is a busy week. Not only did the anniversary event just start, but we also have update 1.253 coming out on this Wednesday. For the first time in forever, we finally have an improvement. You've probably noticed that when you collect from buildings that give an unusual resource like fragments, instead of getting individual pop-ups, you'll have what InnoGames calls a multi-reward window that shows all the rewards. This is such a nice quality of life change, so good job, Inno. With bug fixes, we first have guild versus guild changes? Wow. It's incredible that this feature is actually getting some love. It was possible using external scripts or tools to attack a sector that your guild just granted independence to. This is thankfully no longer possible. Take that, hackers. Additionally, defeating or deleting a siege on sectors would not black out those sectors even if it should have. And this means that beach sectors would remain attackable even if they were supposed to be blacked out. Moving on to some display issues, chaining buildings to the main chain building would not increase the number of chained buildings visually, and you can now see the correct amount. The change log is also laying down a bit of a challenge of saying chained building five times in a row, so let's find out. Chained building, chain building, chain building, chain building, chain building. That was pretty easy. The official wiki was missing an icon for guild goods on building info pages, and it will now show the image correctly. We also have a quick fix for the aid all button, and this one is a bit controversial. When you aid all, the abort button for quests will now gray out, preventing you from using it. This does limit your ability to do quests and aid at the same time, but it only takes a few minutes to aid everyone on your list tops, so you can just fight a few battles or play a board in the anniversary event while you're waiting. Of course, we have to cover all the changes specifically for the mobile players. I know you're out there. Starting with their own variety of display issues. In the grand prizes for the event, some goods could be displayed with a time zero as the amount. Imagine getting a grand prize milestone and getting nothing. That would be pretty frustrating. The Druid Hut's production display was also improved to make the random productions easier to understand. It'll now no longer show all the random productions in one chunk that adds up to 200%, but instead split them into two separate sections as it should be. In miscellaneous mobile changes, it was possible to trigger a finished scouting window when opening a sector with an exploration site, meaning that you could accidentally spend 50 diamonds for nothing. Luckily, we won't have to worry about this anymore. If you were using an outdated version of the app, you would not always be provided with the link to download the newest version, and now you'll be able to get straight into the action with fresh updates. Now, as you might expect, I can't end this video without giving all of you a nice little sneak peek at some stuff that's happening on beta. Recently, the wildlife event returned and brought with it the same minigame as previous years, where you pop blocks to get chests and paws down to the bottom of the screen. However, we do have several brand new buildings. The main event building is the Panda Reserve, which gives a decent amount of attack boosts for both attacking and defending armies, and also a lot of goods and forge points. As you might expect, there is a golden upgrade for this event too, and using it brings the Panda Reserve up to the Panda Shrine. This version gives us more attack boosts, 70 goods, and up to 18 forge points, making it quite the powerful building. Now, I know you all might be thinking, ugh, another golden upgrade that's hard to get? Well, it turns out that's not the case. This event has leagues, and if you happen to place in the Apprentice League, which is the top 20% of players, you'll get the full golden upgrade for free. Failing that, you can also pretty easily get a golden panda statue from the grand prizes that will give you one of the 150 fragments needed to assemble the golden upgrade every day. That's not all though, because the Panda Reserve is also a chain building. There are three chain pieces that will boost either attack for defending armies, defense for defending armies, or give you forge points. There's also some other new buildings too, being the Himalayan Furs and Rhododendron Field, but they're only available from the event pass or being in the top 5% of players in the leagues. All in all though, the 2023 wildlife event looks like it'll be a lot of fun and actually decently balanced. Of course, probably the last thing you need on your mind is worrying about another event when we've got the anniversary event right now. So if you haven't seen it yet, check out my announcement video on it where I go over some of the best strategies for the event linked on screen now. Good luck with the event, and as always, I'll see you next time.